Hi, welcome to another YouTube video. I'm going to have a quick look at my new favourite programme. This is a programme called Voice Macro. Okay, it's not my favourite programme, but it's, it's actually really good. Uh, so quite a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago now, I came across a programme that let you create your own um, sort of macros, shortcuts, if you like, um, using your voice. Uh, I've been trying to find it, and I couldn't remember what it was called, and I couldn't find it. But I found this other programme called Voice Macro, um, which isn't a new programme. It's been known for a while, I believe. Um, because you do need .NET, Fra .NET Framework version 3.5 to run it, which is still downloadable, so it's not, not really a problem. Um, but it's, uh, it's a really useful one, and what it basically does is it lets you create um, macros, which are basically like a sequence of commands, um, if you like, on your computer. So it might be a sequence of events such as um, particular keyboard presses or, or mouse movements or mouse clicks, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you can trigger those with different voice commands that you can set up yourself, or you can also set it uh, up so to be triggered by um, keyboard shortcuts or by specific mouse click or movements as well. So it's a really clever little bit of software. So this is Voice Macro. I'll open it in a second. I have just cre uh, created just a couple of uh, uh, macros of my myself just to give you a bit of an idea of what it can do. So, for example, as I mentioned in previous videos, I use a different keyboard layout and I use one called Dvorak. Um, so if you look down here, it says it's, an, it's uh, currently set to the Dvorak keyboard. That's sort of shown by the DV underneath there. So I'll set up a macro because sometimes my children use computers as well and they don't necessarily want that keyboard on. So if you say change keyboard, change keyboard, there we go. So it's changed it to the QWERTY keyboard, so it just says UK on there now instead. So you can do lots of simple things like that. So that's basically emulating the Windows and spacebar on the computer, which is the keyboard shortcut to change between keyboards. Change keyboard. Change keyboard. Doesn't always work. Um, honestly, you know, it does take a bit of uh, getting used to, um, but it seems, you know, it seems pretty, pretty successful. Uh, so I've just done a couple of other ones as well, just as an example. And there's different ways to do these. So if I say Chrome. Chrome. And there we go, it's launched uh, Google Chrome for me. Now, I am using the microphone on these headphones rather than the computer microphone today, so it, it may not be picking me up quite as well as it uh, has done previously, but it still seems to be working okay. So when I said uh, this shortcut just then, what it did was it clicked on there, it started to type CH, and then it pressed the enter key for me to, uh, to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, alternatively, there's different ways you could do it. So, for example, if I right click on my Chrome icon here and go to, um, in fact, no, I won't do it that way. So, I go to here and then right click on that and open file location. What you can do on uh, on a Windows computer, which I might have mentioned in a previous video, is if you can find the shortcut to a program, you can right click on that, go to properties. And then in here you can create your own keyboard shortcut for it. So if I press, uh, if I hold down the control key now, it automatically puts an alt in for me as well. And then I'll just do C. So now if I type control alt C, that will also launch Chrome. Okay, that's fine. So if I press control alt C on my keyboard now, hopefully. There we go, yeah, just a little bit delayed. So if you can set up shortcuts and things for programs like that, then you can set those up for voice macro. Because the problem with the the one the when I say Chrome, is that sometimes it goes to here, it types a C, and it just loads the calculator rather than Chrome, um, because it's not quite loaded in properly and, and it doesn't work perfectly. So uh, so it would probably be better to change my macro to actually launch my keyboard shortcut for Chrome instead. Okay, so let me just quickly get this program up. So as you can see, it's uh, it's trying to recognise what I'm saying constantly as I'm speaking. You can stop it from listening by clicking on here or pressing Alt and L on your keyboard. If I go to Edit, you can see some um, shortcuts I've already created in here. So uh, for example, let me just cancel that a second. Minimise. Just minimises all the windows I've got open on the screen. And that is uh, Windows and M on the uh, on the computer. Let's get back into there. So if I want to add a new shortcut, so I go to add new. I can say what I want my voice command to be. If I want to use a voice command to do it, or I can trigger it with, like I say, with a keyboard, mouse, or a gamepad, or, or, or a specific schedule as well, I've mentioned that. So let's create a new one to launch, uh, I don't know, let's do Microsoft Teams. 
Okay. So there's different ways I can do this. I can click on a keyboard and I can uh, put a specific keyboard key in there if I want to. So if I've got a shortcut already set up for Teams, I could do left control and then left alt and then uh, and T for Teams or whatever I've set up. Alternatively, you can do things like this as a recorder on here and you can get it to record keyboard presses only or you can get it to record all your mouse movements as well. So if I click on, so if I know that my Microsoft Teams is always going to be in that position on my desktop, I can press start here and I can double click on Teams. Stop that. I'm going to wait a minute while it launches Teams. And then if I click on OK and save, I was going to close Teams, I don't really want that open at the moment. But now if I say Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams. And there you go. No hands, it's just recording my mouse movement and it's launched Teams for me. So somebody who has a visual impairment, for example, or somebody who has a physical disability, um, some programs, well, most programs do have quite a lot of accessibility options and things in them. So I'm just going to stop that from listening for a second. Uh, loads of keyboard shortcuts and lots of programs, but not everything does. Uh, certainly a uh, young man I work with in, in a college, he's on a, an IT course. Um, most software that he uses, he can access via screen readers and by keyboard shortcuts and that sort of thing. But there's always a few programs where there's, there's little bits, icons on the screen or bits of text on the screen that for whatever reason just haven't been made accessible. And he does luckily have a small amount of vision, but he does have to get very, very close to the screen. It's very difficult for him. But if you could create your own macros like this, whether it be with keyboard shortcuts or your voice, uh, you could then sort of, um, you could record your mouse movements or you could record specific um, keyboard commands to uh, to do those things for you so uh, you know it's just a case of remembering what all your different commands are that you've set up so really really useful program that one so that's called voice macro so worth a uh, worth a look at and i think i've just shown you the basics on there so uh, like i say you can get it to do a whole load of actions at once if you want to um, so if I say, uh, for example, if I say video time, it launches um, OBS, which is the software I use for recording these YouTube videos. It also launches um, uh, Audacity, which I've started to use uh, to record my uh, voice via these recordings rather than record everything together. Uh, and it launches, um, well, I've got it to launch a program called Droid Cam as well. So if I'm using the uh, Phone, uh, the camera from my mobile phone, it will launch that as well. So just that was just a bit of a test, really. But you can get it to do a whole sequence of commands if you wanted to, uh, and it's really useful. Um, I, I, you know, I find it quite handy already because it, it just just it's, it's a good time saver as much as anything else, and it'd be really useful for, like I say, for somebody who may be physically disabled and can't use a keyboard and mouse, somebody who has a visual impairment who's uh, can't necessarily access things, everything on the screen, just to speed things up a little bit for them as well, and just useful for anybody. Uh, so well worth a look at. Um, so that's called Voice Macro. Um, so I will put the website that I found it in the in the description and the link for um, .NET Framework. I think it's 3.5 as well that you need to load it. Okay, thanks very much. It's been a quick short video. Any questions or comments, please uh, please feel free and speak to you soon. Bye.